Hi, welcome to the 2019 Paper 1, uh, Question 3 of the Leave and Start Ordinary Level. As usual, if you want to practice this, just pause it and make your way through. And if you want the set of notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address is in the description below. So question three here. Now, part A has a one, okay, uh, worth 15 marks, and a part two worth five marks, okay? But it's another part of part B. But the, I put them on the same page just because I need the graph. Um, for answering part two, so just kind of hand you to have them on the same page. So, so we're given a function f is defined as f of x is equal to this expression. Okay, so there's a lot of um complexity there, but it's bigger than a quadratic, it's actually a cubic equation or a third order polynomial if you want to get all fancy about it, and it'll have a specific shape. Okay, so it'll have a max turning point and a minimum turning point. Looks, looks something like that, okay? And the last bit here doesn't really matter. It just says for all uh, real numbers of x, okay, it just doesn't really matter. So part one here says, complete the table below for the values of f in the domain, so it just tells you to use these x values. Um, so between minus one and plus four. And I would assume just for simplicity, just assume the whole numbers, not every number, whatever. Because you don't, you don't need, it's kind of telling you what numbers to use here in the table. And it says, and hence draw the graph of the function f of x in that same domain. Okay, so it's kind of a little fluff here. Ultimately, what they want you to do is use the x value, put it into the, your expression, and find out the f of x value, or for lack of a better word, the y value. And it's always worth with function notation remembering that f of x is the same thing as y. That can be helpful sometimes in order to solve or think through certain problems certain ways of approaching the problems. Then they give you a sample one here. So when three goes in, okay, if you put through your calculator, if you replace every x value by three, and in a sense do it in brackets, just because the minus here can do what can be confusing, and then your calculator will understand the, the way you're, you want to um, calculate it, then you're going to end up with an answer of 10. So once you've, I suppose in a sense, proven that to yourself, well, why would any of the other x values be any different? So you can just scroll back and replace the x value with well, 4. Okay, if you do that, when I put in 4, I got 2. When I put in 2, I got 8. When I put in 1, I've got 2. x value of 0, I got negative 2. And x value of negative 1, I got 2. I've shown a sample calculation just to show how I've arrived at the answer at one of my points. And then the if I'm just using the same calculation, the other one should be correct in the same way. Or you could argue if they are incorrect, they'd be incorrect in the same way. So wrong input but consistent answer can end up getting you a fair amount of marks. Now I'm then going to try graph it. So I'm doing the points here. So negative one, I calculated two. The value of zero on the x, which is all along the y-axis, I got negative two. One on the x, I got positive two. Two on the x, I got eight. Three on the x, was I was told that was already 10. And the last one there, four on the x, gave me a y value of two. So I'll plot them. And then with a smooth, continuous line, okay, um, I'm gonna join those points together. Don't wanna to draw with straight lines, okay? That's um, the polynomial, by definition, one of its properties is that it has a smooth, continuous line. Job done, 15 marks, okay. So part two then, I'm gonna take away the fluff here. So part two is asking me to use my graph, again, whatever graph I draw okay, is accepted as correct, to estimate the two roots. So basically the two roots is where does it cross um, the, the, the x-axis. Now there is actually three roots, but one of the roots is, is not in that domain, it's off over here. They're only looking for what parts, where on the x-axis does this curve cut between minus one and four? That's basically what it's saying, which is these two points here. So it's what, I'm, I'm, I'm judging it as being 0.7 and negative 0.7. Now your graph may be slightly different because you've drawn it by to, to, with your hand. So whatever your graph says, wherever the curve cuts the x-axis, they're the roots.
Okay, you don't need the third root because it's not cutting between four and negative one. That's it, part two. Now part B here is looking to find the value of X for which F, now I'll say apostrophe, I'm actually sure what that's called, F of X um, or the double differential of F of X equals zero. And this symbol okay, with function notation just means it's been differentiated. And there's two of them, means it's been differentiated twice. And they kind of give you the hint here by saying it's the second derivative of f of x. So basically you're taking your function, differentiating it once, and then differentiating it again. That might put people off, but when you see the word derivative, it might give a hint that differentiation is going to be in play. If you're studying for the math course, differentiation is going to make up a certain percentage of the overall exam. Learning to do basic differentiation using the power rule is fairly handy, okay? Um, and is a good way of picking a mark. So, in a sense, if you come across a function or equation and you're not sure what to do when you think it's to differentiate, just differentiate it. If, you're, if, if you don't need to do it, well, okay, you've wasted a few minutes or seconds. If you do, it's going to get you some marks, okay? So some attempt at differentiation here, or some correct attempt, is most likely going to get you the low partial. Okay, so the answer is the function from part uh, A. So we differentiate it. Now I'm going to go through each term. So the first term, I'm multiplying the power by the number in front of the x. So it's 3 times minus 1. It's the same thing as negative 3. That's how I get that. Now step 2 of the method is I'm taking 1 away from the power. So 3 take away 1 is 2. So That's where I get the 2 up here. So whenever you differentiate minus x to power 3, you end up with the expression minus 3x squared. Okay, so that's basically, basically differentiation using the power rule. We'll do the same thing with the second term here. So 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, take 1 away from the power. 2 take away 1 is 1. I didn't bother writing the 1. If I could have, it wouldn't have been wrong. I just, it's not needed. Now, when you differentiate a variable that has only a power of 1, the variable disappears, you're left with the number. So that's 1x, okay, so when the x disappears, you're left with the 1. Now the reason that happens is, okay, I suppose just for practice, if that was our expression, okay, 1x to the power 1, the rule would be, uh, the power would say multiply power by number in front, so 1 by 1 is 1. Take 1 away from the power would give me 1x to the power of 1, take away 1 is 0. Now one of the rules of power says that anything to the power of 0 is 1. That becomes, okay, 1 times 1, okay, 1 times 1 is, well, 1. That's how we got that differential. Now, negative 2, any constant or any number, when differentiated, turns to 0. Okay, so that, go, that just disappears, for lack of a better word. And there's your first derivative. Now, the second derivative, okay, I'm going to um, differentiate this again. Let me get rid of the fluff. So do it again. So power by number in front, 2 times negative 3 is the same thing as negative 6. Take 1 from the power, 2 take away 1 is 1. Okay. The 8x, the x disappears, you're left with 8. The 1 is a constant, so it turns to 0. So I now have an expression for my second derivative. Now they say find the value of x for which f of uh, the second derivative, second differential of x is equal to zero. So they're telling me, when you find the second derivative, put it equal to zero, okay? So I've written those two facts that they've told me from the question there. And this is a, I wouldn't say it's a hard thing in maths, but it's not something most people resonate with them. But in a, in, in a situation like this, if those two things are equal, okay, which is what they're telling you, well then why aren't these two things? And they are, so that's what you do. So you put them together, put them equal. Then you have an equation of one unknown. So let's solve it, why not? Bring the negative 6x across the equal, turns into its opposite operator, so it becomes uh, added. So 6x equals 8. And then finally, to find out what x is, bring the 6 across the equal, okay? And you end up with 8 over 6, which is the same thing when simplified as 4 over 3. And that's your value of x. Now. That's the, that's the answer. So make sure your work is tidy and clean, okay? Um, and then that's the full five marks.
Okay, so I think that's question three. Yes, question three finished, okay? So thank you and see you on question four.